All right, a very good morning, my guest this morning. I'm very honored to be joined by Mr. John Mattison. He's the author of God, Spies and Lies, a book that has caused, caused major waves in some of the morning newspapers. Mr. Mattison, sir, a very good morning. What an honor. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. John, it's awesome to hold this book in my hand. Um, I haven't had quite a chance to read all of it, but for the benefit of our viewers out there who haven't had the same chance, please tell us, give us a quick synopsis of what the book is about. Well, it's, it's, it's a, it became a big book. It's really trying to understand our history in a new non-racial way that really looks at all the parts of it. And I use the media just as a thread to understand the politics. For instance, you, people may not know, the first newspaper in South Africa was started in 1800 by slave traders. And they got, the slave trading company got a license from a corrupt British governor. So that was how things started. Um, then if you look later in the uh, 19th century, there was a, a real burgeoning of black newspapers all over South Africa, um, uh, right until a uh, union. Um, but, but that was really cut off. Union had a very bad effect on that. Uh, but one of the other interesting things is how Rhodes, Cecil Rhodes, was supporting a black newspaper, a Dutch newspaper, an English newspaper mm -hmm. at the same time and using it for political purposes. Anyway, so that's it, but it goes right to the present and I, I'll, I'll leave you to ask some questions to <laughs> go into the more controversial parts. That's very interesting, John. You know, before we continue, let me just quickly uh, give our viewers at home a quick synopsis. God, Spies and Lies is an explosive insider's account of how South Africa got to where it is today and how things went wrong. Well, these are the words of our guest today, Mr. John Madison, and he is a political and foreign correspondent and one of the pioneers of Democratic South Africa's free broadcasting environment. John, look, you mentioned here in one of the passages that you housed the incumbent president as, you, as your house guest. Tell us a bit about that relationship there. Well, you've got to remember this was a very different time. Uh, uh, I was uh, going away to, to uh, the States. I was doing a, a, a documentary series comparing race in America and South Africa and Jacob Zuma was head of ANC intelligence and he needed a place to stay. And remember, people came back from exile with nothing and he was one of the first to come in because he was preparing the way for the others and he stayed in my house for a couple of months and he uh, while he was there he hosted Madiba and a group from MK when they were bringing people from exile and internal to get together to meet. Hmm. Does he know about the book yet? I've no idea. <laughs> Look, John, former President Nelson Mandela and Charles Bloomberg are very prominent figures in your book. Tell us more. Well, I've spoken to Mandela about Charles and Charles about Mandela. They were friends. What is really interesting about the relationship was while Charles Bloomberg was at the Sunday Times in a senior, senior position, he was secretly meeting Madiba, and what they were discussing was strategies for how to end apartheid. And at that time, you've got to understand that, that the, the nationalist government was a real really felt like a monolith. Uh, many, many of your viewers are too young to remember, but at that time it just seemed impossible to break them. They got stronger and stronger. And they wanted to understand what were its workings, what kept it strong. And they really isolated two things, the ideology, which they called Christian nationalism, yes. and the Afrikaner Brudebont. And Charles Bloomberg set it as his task to break open the Brudebont in the Sunday Times. And it took him Three or four years, and he did it. In 1963, he broke it open in the Sunday Times. John, please, I should have started with this. Please explain the title. A lot of people are saying, how is this politically related? God lies and spies. Well, I suppose <laughs> the answer is you have to read the book. But really, there's a chapter on God and apartheid and how uh, God was used uh, to, to justify apartheid. And it really comes, I don't want to get into too much detail, but it really comes from how... Uh, a certain interpretation of Dutch Calvinism was used to say that apartheid was 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 Christian. Mm, John, look, uh, there's also three images on part three of the founder uh, uh, of the book, uh, of the founder of Abantu Batu, Pixika Isaka Seme, Dr. D.F. Malan, editor of the Burger, as well as Mahatma Gandhi, who established the Indian opinion. Now, we did, uh, you mentioned this earlier on in the interview, only one of those newspapers have survived the apartheid regime and is today one of the biggest media houses in, in the world. How could this have happened, sir? Well, what it shows you, I mean, this is why I put it there. There's, these are three pictures of political leaders in South Africa in the 1910s who were editors and, or in charge of newspapers. One was 
Uh, Pixley Semmer, who started a newspaper called Abantubata, which was the ANC newspaper in 1912. The other was Mahatma Gandhi, mm -hmm. and of course, who had Indian opinion. And the third was Dev Milan. Dev Milan's pap uh, paper was De Burger, and that's the basis of Naspers today, which is one of the biggest companies in the world. Mm -hmm. The other two closed. And of course, it asks the obvious question, what if they would all have been allowed to thrive. Absolutely. You could have had a, a, a black nice pairs, an Indian mm. nice pairs. You could have had all sorts of things. All right. And uh, so according to you, what would get the country back on track? Well, I think we have to, we have to have quality leadership and it has to have the courage to, to work with the constitution. And I do think that there are dangers of secrecy now as much as there were dangers of secrecy then. The Buddha board operated through secrecy and that gave it a lot of power. And now we have to have bold public debates in Parliament. We have to have civil society get stronger and fight for the issues that it cares about. Mm, can I quote you on, on, on the prefix here at the back? It says, 25 years later, my former house guest has all but morally bankrupted Nelson Mandela's ruling African National Congress. Tell us a bit about that statement, sir. Well, I think, uh, you know, you look at Nkandla and it's never solved. Uh, you, you know, the, we are a modern country. We have had very um, ancient aspects as well but we're a country that can't wait years and years for a decision whether it's about a cunt and cundler or the SAA you have to have efficient positive leadership and you have to respect the constitutional um, uh, institutions like the public protector you, you know to take years and years to second guess a constitutionally protected body um, it holds us all back and the country can be turned around economically if you do the right thing and I'll give you one example and that's the information economy mm. we missed the information revolution I have a chapter that says why we missed it and how we could get back so what are the teachings basically in this book Mr. Madison well we have to have the courage that we had in the beginning you know the Mandela generation had a strategy that was clearly thought out and what Mandela was talking about in 1961 succeeded in 1994. That was the plan. Since then we've been uncertain about our plan and increasingly uncertain. We have to have a plan and the problems are in some ways more difficult because they're economic but you have to take bold decisions and you have to engage with all aspects of civil society. You may not like our business community, you might say they're old white and old and they're part of the, part of the old regime, but you have to decide do you want them or don't you? How are you going to deal with them? You need to build, I mean, when I was in the broadcast authority, we built black um, uh, um, uh, media houses. And uh, what you see now all started when we were there. So we were very proactive about that. But you have to make decisions about what you are and what you're trying to build. John, very quickly, I know we're almost out of time, but I have to ask you this. Who is this book really targeted at? Well... <laughs> <laughs> it's targeted at everyone. It, it talks about everyone. It'll make a lot of people cross. There are, I look at how the, the liberal establishment failed in the end with the Ron Daily Mail. I look at how the Brudabont needed to be challenged. And I look at how things now need to be changed. And I hope that young South Africans uh, will, will find something valuable in it. All right. And where can they find it, sir? In all the bookshops. All right, Mr. Madison, thank you so much. So it was such a pleasure. Let me now thank our very first guest this morning, author Mr. John Madison, who was telling us about his latest book, God, Spies and Lies. Media Monitor returns shortly after.